Okay. Hello everybody, Todd here, all things archery and shooting. I want to welcome you to my channel. If you're if you're returning to my channel, thank you for coming back. If you're new here, please just click that subscribe button for me. And also click that like icon next to that subscribe button. And if you click that bell icon, I can notify you of upcoming videos. I try to do videos about once a week, and every week I try to bring in a different bow just to review, a different type of vintage bow, okay? Or an inexpensive bow as well, too. So I do a lot of bow reviews, and I've got some gun reviews coming up, too. So a lot of guys have been asking for my gun reviews. I've done those in a while, but I've got a few more coming up. I've got a gun review on a Model 686 Smith & Wesson 3-inch coming up. I've got a gun review on a lightweight Commander coming up. I've also got a gun review on a black powder rifle coming up, so be sure to look for those, okay? So let's talk about what I have here now for me, okay? What we have here is a 1955 vintage Ben Pearson three-piece takedown fiberglass longbow, okay? This bow um, is a model 304. Uh, he always used numbers for his ratings, and he really changed it throughout his years. And later on, like in the early 70s, he, he had he, his, his three number system went to a four number system. He added a zero to the end. So we always had used numbers for his systems on a lot of his bows. So this model was found in the catalog under model 304. I found an old 1955 Ben Pearson catalog, and it's right there. All right. The bow is 64 inches long AMO total. It is a 50 pound draw weight at 28 inches. And by the way, I checked that on my draw scale, and at 28 inches, it's not quite 50 pounds, it's coming in right about 48 pounds, and so it's a little bit off. It could be because of the age of the bow, it is 55, so it's almost 60 years old. And at my drawing, 29 and a half inches is coming in at 51 pounds, all right? Um, so it's, like I said, it might have lost a little bit of draw weight over time, but it's still pretty accurate. Uh, also came with all the stuff you see here. It came with a, a 1955 hunting regulation pamphlet for Pennsylvania wildlife, which is kind of cool, all right? It also came with the all the original paperwork, which is what this is here. All the original paperwork came with it as well, too. It came with this bow. It came with the, what used to be called bow cards. They were cards that were folded into the bow that told the information on the bow, the, the AMO on it, the, the string length, the weight, everything else. So that came with it. That's pretty rare. came with like a little... Um, thing about how to straighten your arrow shafts, which also came with it. And, of course, it came with the Ben Pearson manual, which is really wild. It's a pretty cool little manual. I mean, it's really neat how he does this stuff in here. And I think that's a picture of Mr. Ben Pearson himself drawn on the manual. So, <laughs> it also came with a Ben Pearson arm guard, vintage 1950s. Uh, ben Pearson tag, look at that crazy tag. It's just one piece of leather is all it is. I mean, it's just... Crazy how this thing works. Look at that. It's never been used, by the way. This tab's never been used, never been broken in, so it's still new. I got a pair of gloves here. Now, the gloves have been used. I guess they used the gloves on this. is a large 1950 vintage Ben Pearson glove on it. So, this is here. All right. It did not come with a string, so I had a string made for it. Had, this is a Dacron string, 61 inches for this bow, which is a 64 inch AMO. You always make your long bows three inches shorter than your actual AMO rating, and your recurves you make four inches shorter than your AMO rating. So this is a 64 inch bow, and I used a 61 inch string I had made for it, okay? The leather wrapped handle is in really super good condition. There's no fraying on the leather. There's no very little wear on it. I mean, just normal wear. It's wrapped in an aluminum holder, okay? But it's in super, so you usually get these leather handles that are all peeled or wore off from sweat or just damaged. This thing's in, I mean, it's in immaculate shape, really good shape, okay? You've got the two bow pieces here. This is the bottom bow. You can always tell the bottom bow two ways. You always put the number on it, and you've got a little red mark around it. I'm not sure if he did that or someone else did, but that's the bottom limb. And this looks like it's been self-camouflaged with, um, looks like, because the, the glass is an olive green. That's also like a date 1955. They used an olive green glass for this. But the, whoever had the bow before sprayed it with some with different colors of um, black and light gray paint, I guess, to help camouflage it. Did a pretty good job, actually. It doesn't look too bad. Let me know if you want me to strip this paint off, get it back down to the original color. I think it's kind of cool the way it is, but if you want to, I can go ahead and strip it off. It's got the Ben Pearson logo, which they painted right over, which is right there. It's hard to see, but it's there. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. Nice, nice ball, old school type tips. I'll get you a close up view of this in a minute. The bottom here, uh, it went into the, into the handle, all right? 
So, let me get you guys a close up view of all this. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and start with this leather grip. This is really a good shape. Look at the condition this grip is in. I mean, it's really clean. Even the threads are still good shape on it. I mean, there's no wear on it. It's really good. Look at the, how clean it is inside. This bow can be shot left-handed or right-handed from either side of the... We'll show it once we get it, once we get it assembled. Let's take a look at the top limb. This is the top limb of the bow. Okay. See the nice camouflage someone did on it? It's an olive green fiberglass. They did their own camouflage job on it. I'm not sure if Ben Pearson did that. I know he offered camouflage for additional charge back in the day, but I can't confirm that he did this camel job, so it might have been done by someone else, but it's not too bad. Pretty decent job. You can see the end, how it fits into the handle. And the tips, how small the tips. Look at the tips. Those are old school. Look at the old school tips there. That's pretty wild, huh? Okay. Here's the bottom limb. Again, the bottom limb... It's got a red mark on it right here. I'm not sure that Ben Pearson did that or someone that owned it before did that, but you can always tell the bottom limb mark by that model number, which is right here, 304. All right. And here's the end of it. I mean, fiberglass is in super shape. There's no cracks in it, no, no splits or, st or stray fibers popping up. Again, the, someone camouflaged it pretty well. I mean, really good shape. I mean, you can see that the... Um, Knocks are really good shape too as well. This old Ben Pearson glove here. That's pretty cool. Check this out. Old Ben Pearson glove. Can you see his name is written down there? It says Ben Pearson. It's kind of worn a little bit, but you can still see it. Old snap style class. This glove was used. You can tell it's got some finger use on it. Some break in. But it's still, I mean, I bet if I use this glove today, it's still a good shape. I mean, this glove's from 1950s. Wow. Here's the tab that came with it. This is the original tab that came with Ben Pearson. I found this in their catalog when they showed the bow. And that tab's never been used. That thing is 60 years old, never been used. Here's the arm guard. Get other, this has been used a few times. It's got some hits on it from the bow string. And you can see Ben Pearson right there, okay? All right, it's got leather, a little metal band in it right there. And again, the straps have the old style hooks on them right there where they actually hooked into the... Um, this is before Velcro, guys. We're actually hooked in right there. So that's how it was, it was fastened. Okay, nice little stuff there. Here's the Ben Pearson uh, manual that came with it. I think that's Ben Pearson himself on that cover. But it's pretty cool, though. It's got, I mean, you open it up. It's in a really good shape. It's not yellow or anything. It's in a really good shape. You show, you show them how to string the bow properly. How anchoring is how important. Even back in the day, they knew how important anchoring was. Arrow and how to set your arrow. Look at how they set the arrow knock point back then. They used a piece of paper and folded it over. That's how they set the arrow knock before a bow square. That's pretty cool. All right. How to knock an arrow properly. Showing you three fingers. Okay. Proper stance. Going over proper stance for you. Again, shows you how to properly knock an arrow. Going over the proper stance for you. How to draw the bow. Anchoring of the bow. How, to, how important anchoring is. Always use the same anchor. Aiming and holding techniques okay arrow point in relation to the bow target which is right there that's kind of cool and how you're in your release so it was pretty in interesting little book here you open it up it tells you how to serve in the loop how to serve in your um your string how to adjust the bow string okay, this is before they had endless loop they used to make a loop and it's wrapping around and tied on a bow string like that okay you can use your bow as a range finder too. You know that's pretty cool. You can set up use your bow as a range finder. Okay, the point aim method, how to aim and point and shoot correctly. So it's kind of cool. So that's using your bow limb as a as a range finder. <laughs> had an old school tape on bow sights and stuff. Do that. Use it for hunting and everything. Care of your equipment, how to take care of it, how to take care of your arrows. Bows for beginners, different weights. Look at how the, the, the weights they have weights there for women and men and different arrow lengths. Different publications of archery you could sign to and always be careful. Accidents don't just happen, they are caused by careless and negligence. That is so true. 
and the back of it. That's pretty cool. Okay. Here's an illustrated instruction for ship for stringing your bid piercing takedown bow. This is how you're supposed to string the bow. They show you how to string it. See that? Kind of cool. We don't use these push pull methods anymore because they sometimes they'll twist the limbs. Not so much on a long bow, but on a recurve they do. But that's pretty cool how that came with it. And this is the coolest piece of all, I think. Look, this is a 1955, from 1955 to August 31st, inclusive of 1956. So this came out September 1, 1955. This is the uh, Digest of Pennsylvania Hunting and Trapping Regulations. Pretty wild. All right. Okay. Okay. So you like that walk down memory lane. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go get this bow strung up. Let's see what it looks like strung up. Uh, I couldn't find any brace height information on this bow. I didn't really list it in the catalog. I used to before the time of brace heights. But getting on a couple of archery for and replaced, I did find some people do have this bow. They recommend between a seven, eight inch brace height. So we'll see if we can get that right now. Let's get this thing put together. And get all this cool stuff put out of the way. We'll get it strung up. Take a look at it strung up. Okay, yeah, this bow takes a Dacron string, so I had one made for it. I made one for it. What I did is I think the AMO length of this bow is 64 inches, so I made it. I made it a 61-inch um, string. All right, let's go ahead and get it put together. Okay. Now, first thing you need to do is you need to make sure there's nothing inside your thing that's going to cause any issues when you put your bow thing in. All right. All right. So we got our bottle limb goes in here. Okay. Just like that. Top limb goes in just like that. Okay. Slide down. Go get this strung up now. All right, there you go. All strung up. Got the right brace side on it. There we go. It's got a good tiller. Tiller's still the same on each side. So that's good. All right. The bow's lightweight too. And like I said, the bow can be shot off the left or right hand side, depending which way you want to shoot it. Looks like this bow was mostly used as a left-handed bow because there's more wear on the on the on the, for this side and on the other side, that'd be a, if you're shooting left-handed, that'd be the left-handed side. Look, like this bow is used more as a left-handed bow. All right, there it is. All right. Well, the next in part two of this video, we're going to head out to the range and we're going to put it in, put it through its paces. We're going to run through the corner graph, run some cedar shafts through it, and we'll put some new um, new carbon arrows through it as well too. I'll be running arrows at 10 grains per pound of draw weight for a hunting weight arrow, which for this bow will be around a 510, 520 grain arrow. And I'll, I'll also be running 8 grains per pound of draw weight for a target arrow, which would be around a 400, 420 grain arrow, okay? So I've got those arrows built up. We're going to head out to the range now, and we'll put it through its paces, see how she performs both through the corner graph, how accurate she is out to 15 and 20 yards, and just see how she shoots. I mean, they could walk down memory lane with this old 1955 vintage Ben Pearson Model 304 takedown longbow. Okay, well, this has been Tom with All Things Archery and Shooting, and I'll see you guys out in the range. Thanks.